office watching and streaming in online. Um, this is the first time that we are actually live streaming our event. And thanks to our, uh, um, our sponsor, uh, Folks Productions, for uh, doing the videotaping today. So we appreciate that. Um, the Biz Under 40 group is sponsored by Atlantic Communications. And today we have a wonderful speaker, Mr. John Rowe. And John Rowe uh, is a serial entrepreneur from Eastern PEI. And he, a couple of his companies are the Timeless Group of Companies. And uh, he's the president of Island Abbey Foods, which is better known as locally as Honey Bee Brand. So um, I'd love to call upon John to share some of his stories and hopefully inspire here today. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Well, I cannot tell you how flattered I was to get the uh, invitation to come and speak with you uh, here at uh, Q at the Pilot House, and uh, also with those of you who may be watching online. Um, I must say I was flattered because I, I don't believe I fit the bill of a bigwig. Uh, in fact, uh, I, uh, I, I don't even think I come close. So. Um, to be invited to speak in, in this uh, particular event uh, truly is flattering. I thought that I would share with you uh, a little bit of, about myself and some of my story. Um, and uh, I'm so pleased that uh, you've uh, devoted the next three hours to hearing it. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll try and keep it to maybe 20, 30 minutes. And uh, hopefully uh, that will inspire some discussion, some questions. Uh, uh, which we would do afterwards. Um, as, as Matt mentioned, uh, my name is John Rowe. I am uh, a local entrepreneur um, from Eastern PEI, uh, and I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I grew up in Montague, uh, which is, uh, you know, the uh, metropolitan center just east of Charlottetown in the uh, suburb of Victoria Cross. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's a great place to grow up. Um, it is rural, but uh, the community out there uh, is, is quite incredible. And I say that because one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is what really shaped me into becoming the entrepreneur that I am and, and, and the person that I am. And that has to do a lot with the people that influenced me throughout my life. Um, I was very, very lucky. I, I still am very lucky. I'm a lucky guy <laughs> because I married this uh, curly-haired uh, girl over here. Uh, but also uh, to have grown up in the environment that I did um, because I was, uh, I was taught at a very early age that anything is possible if you set your mind to it. Um, I was also taught at a very early age that uh, you may not succeed the first time you try, and that's okay. In other words, failure is actually a good thing. This is not intuitive to most people uh, in fact, uh, it, it is totally counterintuitive. Um, so I, I had a, a rather unique uh, family and uh, friend environment, uh, you know, that, that instilled that in me and I believe uh, the rest of uh, my siblings. Um, I come from a large family, uh, extremely large from today's standards. I'm the oldest of five kids, and believe it or not, I'm the oldest of about 34 grandchildren. So it was great. I had a, a free labor force at a very young age as a, as a business owner. Uh, I, uh, I was encouraged under my, my, my father's tutelage to, uh, to get out and start working uh, at a very young age, believe it or not, 11. Yes, he was raised on a farm, uh, so that's pretty normal uh, in, in those circles. And I started my first job, my first business, actually, when I was 11 years old. And this was picking uh, strawberries at uh, our neighbor's farm. Quite literally, his name was Harry Neighbors. Uh, Dutch family, and they had uh, and continued to farm outside of uh, Montague, his sons and, and uh, I'm sure his grandchildren. Um, but uh, I learned a lot that summer, working in the field and then taking what I had and, and trying to sell it. I learned that I really, really loved sales. I really loved working with people and, uh, and also er earning a living. Um, the next summer, again, and this will be a theme throughout, under my father's tutelage, his mentorship, 
uh, he suggested that I bring on help. And uh, so I actually had employees when I was 12 years old. Um, and it taught me something else that uh, has been a recurring theme throughout my career, which is uh, it, it's all about the team. Uh, you need to have a team around you uh, if you're going to grow a business, if you're going to uh, have uh, a chance of success. And uh, I, I love working with people. And this has uh, been key to the success that I've had throughout my career. Um, by the time I graduated from high school, I had, uh, with my family, uh, several seasonal businesses. In fact, we, uh, we owned the local ice cream parlor. We had a Dickie D franchise. Uh, uh, as you can probably tell, I really like ice cream. Um, we also uh, had a, a, a landscaping business. And uh, I was also uh, a, a music teacher, believe it or not, uh, teaching uh, kids uh, all over town. And loved every, every bit of this. Because again, I had an opportunity to work with, uh, with a, a large group of people. Quite literally, uh, we had about 30 uh, staff by the time uh, I was 18. And uh, that really is, is what I enjoyed most about it. I moved off island, went away to university. I uh, went to uh, Bishop's University in Quebec. It was a great place to go to school uh, for uh, university education because it was small, uh, an intimate setting. It was not much larger than Montague High School, believe it or not. So I got to know uh, uh, people there both uh, students who became friends, faculty who became uh, um, mentors, and ultimately friends. So again, very, very lucky to have gotten the education uh, both here on the island and off that I have. Because it reinforced what I was taught early on, which is you're not going to learn solely from books. You're going to learn from life, and you're going to learn from the people around you. And I have been extremely fortunate to have had many, many mentors. Uh, quite literally, over the course of my 20-odd um, years, maybe I'm a little bit older than that, but uh, that I continue to call on today. Whenever I have questions, whenever uh, I just want to bounce ideas off of uh, somebody, I, I can literally pick up the phone, and uh, these people will help me. What I've taken from that is that uh, it is my responsibility as a entrepreneur and as a business owner to do the same. Because if we are going to grow our local economy, we have to learn from one another. And there are a lot of people on PEI that have had success, incredible success. A lot of them are incredibly modest because it's not something that a lot of islanders do to show off their success. But believe it or not, we have people in our midst all across the island, in every corner of PEI, that have grown small businesses into large, that have managed multinationals, uh, that are uh, experts in quite literally every domain that you can imagine. And we have access to them here. This is one of the things that I love about PEI. We don't know what we have in our own backyard. And it's quite incredible when you start to dig in and discover that. So, as you can tell, I, I really love what I do. I am, I believe, a passionate entrepreneur. Um, but it hasn't been an overnight success. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the business that most people around PEI know me for is Island Abbey Foods, also known as Honey Bee, which is their first brand of products. And a lot of people come up to me and, and uh, say, wow, you've done so much so quickly. It must be incredible. Well, it absolutely is incredible. However, we like to say around uh, the office, it's been a 10-year overnight success. Uh, it, 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 it has taken quite a while for us to get our concept from my, uh, my brain to uh, the retail shelf. And I thought I'd share a little bit about that story um, because I believe uh, it, uh, it to be a valuable one. Um, we, uh, we started off quite literally in our basement, um, uh, Sue and I. Uh, and it, it's amazing to think that from those humble beginnings, we have, in the last couple of years, moved three times uh, into successively larger production facilities. Um, and uh, so that has been a rather rapid ascent. But believe it or not, I actually had the idea to make our first product 
over 15 years ago. I had graduated from university and uh, had moved out to the West Coast uh, to work in the technology field. Most of my career has actually been spent not in food, um, but in uh, the software business. And uh, one weekend, uh, while camping near Whistler, uh, had a eureka moment. Um, I had a bit of a honey accident and thought there must be a better way to carry honey around. And when I got home to Vancouver, I started drilling into it and discovered that there were other forms of packaging, but they were all still liquid product. And while there were honey candies and suckers and cough drops, those weren't actually honey. They were sugar. And so uh, I started looking into why and discovered nobody had figured out how to put honey into a solid state. So I sensed an opportunity. I, I thought to myself, self, I couldn't be the only one that, uh, that breaks packaging and uh, you know, gets honey, uh, sticky, messy uh, stuff all over uh, my backpack or briefcase or uh, somebody's purse, et cetera. And so I started looking into how it could be done. It was a hobby, but that's often how businesses start. And uh, fortunately, having grown up in uh, uh, a family that encouraged trying new things, uh, I pursued quite a lot of hobbies, some of which became businesses, some of which did not. And again, it was uh, instilled in me in a very early age, it's okay to try new things. In fact, you should try new things. Whether they succeed or not, that's not the point. The point is trying new things. And so I started cooking honey in my kitchen. Discovered uh, very quickly that that was not going to create the product that I wanted it to create. Uh, so I started uh, looking into the food science behind it and the chemistry. And I am not a food scientist. I am not a chemist. My first degree was in uh, economics and music, <laughs> believe it or not. I studied business and also have a passion for, uh, for music and did a minor in jazz performance. I then subsequently went on to study uh, technology. I've been playing around with computers since I was very young and decided I wanted to try and work in the tech sector. So food, food science, chemistry, I had absolutely no experience in. But that type of a challenge and, and learning, uh, uh, and it was a significant challenge. Um, I didn't take uh, chemistry even in high school. <laughs> so uh, there was a lot to learn. But I had this idea that I believed in, and after starting to research the market, discovered that a lot of people around the world truly love honey. And this was key, uh, and something that I also learned at a young age. Do your research. Um, it's fine to pursue something that you're passionate about in business. However, if nobody is going to buy that product, pay for that service, et cetera, at the end of the day, and pay enough so that you can actually make a living and hopefully do more, um, it may not be worth pursuing. Uh, one of my mentors, uh, he, uh, he's well known as a business uh, um, consultant. Uh, his, his name is Doug Hall. He has a mantra which he calls fail fast and fail cheap. And what it means is when you're trying new things, do as much research as you can before you invest too much and waste too much time and energy and money. You'll be far better off moving on to the next idea. And I firmly believe in this. Well, I sensed an opportunity in this honey uh, world when I started realizing that literally in every country on earth, there is a natural market for honey because honey is produced everywhere. There are bees in every corner of the planet. And in the sweeteners business, roughly 10 to 15% of every country, uh, every country's sweeteners market um, is honey. Honey is the dominant natural sweetener around the world. So uh, discovering this, I sensed, uh, I, I got even more excited sensing the opportunity and began to really pursue the research, um, both on my own as well as with the help of friends. This is another thing that I learned very early on, uh, and it's not to be shy. Whether it's asking your friends and your teachers and your mentors uh, for help, or even somebody that you've never met before. I'll share just briefly a quick story. Uh, when I moved to Vancouver after finishing university, I had some friends and family out there, but I did not have a very broad network. 
and I wanted to get into the technology sector. So I did what somebody advised me to do whenever I go to a new town. I got the name and number of the top 10 CEOs in software in Vancouver, and I called each and every one of them. Six of them offered to sit down and have coffee with me on the first call. Six. And we're talking companies with a combined value uh, at the time. This was in the mid-90s, upwards of multiple billion, billions of dollars. So, uh, you know, it, it, I hope it highlights the fact that uh, people, uh, especially business people, entrepreneurs in particular, are always keen to help other entrepreneurs, um, always keen to offer advice when asked. So don't be shy. Uh, I realized the limits of my food science capabilities, my chemistry capabilities, um, after pursuing this uh, honey research for several years. And fast forward a little while, and I ended up moving back home to PEI. I thought it was going to be a brief stop, to be honest. Uh, this was after I had been down in the States, had started up a business with a friend that uh, uh, we were manufacturing computer products uh, for retail. We launched literally a couple of weeks before 9-11. As you can imagine, the retail sector went from there, and it hasn't even really fully recovered, you know, uh, almost 15 years later. Uh, learned a lot of very valuable lessons uh, during the next three years until ultimately we had to shut the company down. Um, but again, the failure uh, that I experienced is probably one of the most valuable things that I carry with me uh, today because it was, uh, uh, it was a, a pursuit of passion for what we were doing, uh, which ultimately we had to close. Very hard thing to do as an entrepreneur, but sometimes it is the right thing to do. It provided me the opportunity to come home. I thought I was just going to come home and uh, um, hang out on the beach uh, for the summer and, and uh, relax. But I, uh, I had a couple of really momentous things happened. Number one, uh, I met Sue, my wife. Number two, I discovered that PEI had resources um, that, quite frankly, don't exist elsewhere. We actually have competitive advantages here over major markets, major centers all around the world. And not everybody realizes this. In particular, to me, um, I discovered at our university there is a food technology center, one of only a handful in our country or even around North America. And they have resources there that you can hire to assist you in doing R&D. More importantly, that institute has support from our local government, Innovation PEI, and also the federal government, uh, both um, Agriculture Canada and other agencies, the NRC, et cetera, which can help offset the cost of doing R&D. And doing R&D is incredibly expensive. I discovered that after pitching my idea and showing uh, evidence that what I thought could be done could be done, if given the resources, the lab and bench time, they also have a pilot plant where you can test things and a larger pilot plant where you can scale. You can do it with 50 cent dollars. As an entrepreneur in a startup mode, operating out of our basement, this is incredibly valuable. Not only to have access to the infrastructure, but the brain power that they have at this, which is it's now 